Now we're going to talk about uh, fully developed flow between plates. So imagine that you have two plates. We've looked at this problem before, but we haven't actually solved it. Two plates uh, separated by a gap H here. So it's a small gap. The gap is small relative in particular to the length or the width. Um, so it's a wide, long channel uh, with the fluid going down the X direction here. So the fluid is coming in at the entrance, perhaps with a uniform velocity, and then it's going into that channel between the two plates. And what we find for uh, flow that's in enclosed channels, such as between two plates or in a tube, some kind of a tube or a pipe where the flow is enclosed, uh, it often becomes fully developed. So this is a key word, this fully developed flow. And what fully developed means is that the flow is no longer changing its velocity in the direction of flow. So we'll draw how that might look as the flow enters this channel. So it's going to enter from the left here uh, and it's going to go in between those plates and we'll see that the flow will start to change its velocity. But after a while that velocity change will, will not happen anymore. So what does that look like? So we'll draw these plates here. Uh, we're going to have X be going in this direction, in the direction of flow. This will be Y up here. Z is in and out of the paper. And as the flow enters this channel, it's got a uniform velocity. So we can call that U, uh, U infinity or U naught, whatever you want, but it's uniform. So the flow comes in perhaps uniform from some other place. And then it hits this channel. And of course, when it hits the channel, we know that these two walls, the top and bottom wall of the channel, those are going to be, those are solid. And so there's going to be a no slip condition. And so the fluid immediately after hitting the channel, the velocity right near the walls is actually going to drop to zero. And the fluid right next to that is going to start to slow down as well. But the bulk of the fluid right at this entrance region isn't going to have any idea that it's even entered a channel. So it's just going to continue on with a pretty uniform velocity. But as the fluid travels downward, we know that this boundary layer of viscous effects is going to start to grow because we just did that in the last lectures. We know that it's going to be increasingly, there's going to be, this, this is delta, this is the effects of viscosity on the flow. And so that's going to change the velocity of the, of the fluid in the channel. So it's going to go from having almost a uniform velocity to having a less uniform velocity. The velocity in the viscous region has slowed down. The velocity in the middle may still be sort of the same as it was. And then the velocity at the edges will slow down some more. And then as you go even farther, those viscous effects are going to have completely uh, taken over the flow. And so at this point, somewhere in here, you're going to have a velocity profile that is completely determined by the viscosity effects and that's going to be this. So the whole flow is being affected by those walls at this point. And from here on in, as you go farther down the channel, what people find is that that velocity no longer changes. So once it reaches this kind of shape where it, the whole flow is being affected by the, by the wall effects, by the viscous effects, that's the region that's called fully developed. So we divide the flow of this type of channel flow into two regions. We have the entrance region, which is the beginning region where the flow is changing as it flows into the pipe, starting out pretty uniform. And then those viscosity effects are increasingly reaching into the flow. And then we have what's called the fully developed region, where the viscosity effects have completely reached across the flow field and the velocity in the x direction is no longer going to change. So no changes in u, v, or w in the x direction. So the x direction velocity is going to remain constant. And constant, I'm sorry, constant in the, you know, in the x direction. So, so the velocity obviously is changing as you go from the wall to the center of the flow. That's the y direction. There are changes there but there is no longer any change for velocity when you look in the x direction. In addition, there's no w velocity at all because we're saying that w is wide compared to the gap height. And so there's no incentive or reason for flow to be going in the w direction and the z direction. So that we're just going to assume is true. So say if the width is much, much greater than the gap, we can ignore the Z momentum equation 
because W is zero. There's no reason for, for there to be any flow in and out of the paper here. The flow is coming in from the left. It's pushing out to the right. There aren't going to be any changes or really anything happening in zero direction. So we're not really going to have any of that. So in the fully developed region, we only have to worry about the x and the y directions because those are the directions where things are actually changing. Um, and we're also going to say that we know that, you know, because it's fully developed, du dx is equal to dv dx is equal to dw dx. Well, we already just said w is zero, but anyway, if it weren't zero. And that's all going to equal zero because there are no further velocity changes in x direction. No velocity changes in x. So that's the key. Two regions, an entrance region where the flow is changing its profile, going from a uniform profile to a more parabolic profile, and then a fully developed region where the flow is no longer changing its velocity as it moves down the channel. It's keeping the same velocity all the way through to the end.